Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me, especially in this pleasant weather. So I'm Soinam, I'm the co-creator of Starlight, which is basically a cross-platform uh, for you know uh, searches and stuff like that. And we have inbuilt vector databases as well. But uh, I am also maintaining this li open source library called Embed Anything, which uh, uh, provides you with a pipeline to create these embeddings from any kind of unstructured sources, images, uh, PDFs, MD, etc. Uh, it's uh, really open source and it's 50, uh, 40x faster than any other uh, presence resource because we are using Rust in the pipeline uh, for this multi-threading and async processes. Previously, I worked at Quadrant, at Raza, and Sama Technologies. I have also published paper in ACL Anthology. Live in Berlin, <laughs> love to go for hiking and play chess, although I suck at it, so, but, uh, but I love it. So, yeah, what is like embedding thing is like, you know, you can supercharge your uh, embedding pipelines, and we are like everywhere uh, trying to reach out to people like you so that you know you can use it uh, in your pipeline so so let's get started but it's not mostly about vector databases today's talk it's what powers or enables vector database right so uh, once a wise man said <laughs> wise man is Karpati, that you can store these vectors in the area as well uh, like you do not need like uh, this in infrastructure as well people reach out to fancy stuffs quite quickly uh, you can perform similarity with these arrays but the thing is uh, with vector database and what we have seen till now at scale uh, at scale we need things like vector database so today's flow of session will be uh, vectors and databases, we will see classification, and why similarity search is basically needed. Uh, Self-supervised learning, uh, like to truly appreciate metric learning, we'll just you know, touch upon self-supervised learning. Uh, modeling uncertainty in images uh, prediction, right? Because um, I'll show you a graph which will like clear it out with high dimensionality, uh, the, how uncertainty in, uh, imp increases. Uh, we'll touch upon contrastive methods, then uh, metric learning, we'll understand metrics. The problem that you can solve, which is not, uh, if you're working with it, like, you know, if you want to embed, I like pizza, and then you wanna find, I, uh, I do not like pizza, like negation problem, which basically occurs in every domain, be biomedical law everywhere. So uh, how you can overcome that, uh, right? So let's start. So vectors are basically numerical representation of words, images, et cetera, and I have just shown you like MNIST uh, digits and uh, you know uh, fashion data sets so that they cluster like uh, based on similarity. Uh, what is multimodality? So multimodality basically means uh, multiple modes, be it audio, images, uh, text, et cetera. Okay, so what's vector database? Taking this unstructured data into continuous high, uh, high dimension and performing these processes of storing, updating, and retrieval. So all this is possible, uh, especially in RAG, we use retrieval augment gen augmented generation. Uh, we use a lot of retrieving process so, uh, to enable all these uh, processes. So infrastructure at scale. How it gets enabled and what are the drawbacks of classification for this, right? So if we are talking about classification, right, cat versus dog, uh, but how far you can take classification problem? You can add uh, 100 uh, classes, maybe 1,000 classes, but can you scale it like for 1,000 classes, a uh, million classes? No, right? So one of the example is shown in uh, uh, you know a face recognition FastNet kind of thing, uh, where uh, where you do not need to train the uh, the model for uh, new faces. You can just find the representation and find the uh, uh, similarity related to it, and you can scale it to thousand millions because whenever you you know kind of scan your face on your face uh, on your phone, it uh, doesn't train a new model kind of thing. So that's where uh, actually semantic similarity and search shines away because it's very highly scalable. 
Okay, so what is self-supervised learning? A bit, uh, we are touching upon it to like really understand what can go wrong with uh, with metric learning or energy-based models. So, self-supervised learning is like data is acting as supervision, not labels, not classes that uh, were already labeled by humans. There are some uh, amount of uh, human supervision with even with self-supervised learning. We'll see in uh, some time. So basically, self-supervised learning is to predict the unobserved uh, places uh, with uh, or uh, hidden spaces with observed part. So what do I mean by this? Okay, uh, another wise man was asked, "What is the uh, important breakthrough, uh, intellectual breakthrough in AI?" So Lee Kuhn said, "It's self-supervised learning," and uh, I totally agree with him on this. Uh, because you know what uh, they released a paper called the dark matter of intelligence it basically says you know ai uh, can only become uh, you know intelligent enough when it has a common sense and the, to add this common sense thing we need the self supervised learning we do not need to label everything keep labeling everything so yeah so what how do we do this like how do we what do we mean when we say uh, we have to predict the hidden part with unhidden parts? So one of the great example of this is BERT. BERT is basically you mask one of the words and it tries to predict the masked word with the uh, past and future you know, words. So what happens is uh, if you uh, mask, Tom is a mask cat, and you have watched a lot of to uh, Tom and Jerry like me, you will label it with a bad cat. So Tom is a bad cat. So, uh, but the thing is, uh, these labels are finite. Uh, there's a proper number, uh, like, you know, uh, it cannot be infinite because our dictionary is finite, right? So, one of the problem that is faced with images is image has very high uh, dimension plus very high uncertainty to uh, present possibility to represent uncertainty. What that means is, if you have to, one second, we'll come back to gra this graph. Okay, so this cat is holding something. Suppose this is a, 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 suppose this is a blank, right? If this cat is holding something, what is this cat holding, right? Uh, it could be, a, a cof coffee, <laughs> a milk, a wine. It could also be a candy. So it uh, it becomes very it is very difficult to classif make labels and then classify this hidden part in image. That what will this cat be holding, right? Uh, so what? So this is what is represented here. That. Modeling the uncertainty in prediction uh, uh, with images using is possible using contrastive methods, and uh, other less uncertain, low-dimensional can basically be done with NLP, masked prediction, etc. Uh, yeah. So I hope this is very clear to everybody. So, uh, okay, so how do we overcome this? So Siamese network was proposed, and basically what is happening is, here, uh, it's learning that two images come from, two cropped images come from the same image. But there's something more interesting happening over here. There's something more sophisticated it is learning, is the properties. It is basically learning, it's a chess piece. Uh, and clustering together, except from the, like, it's not a sun picture, it's not a beach picture, it's a, a, like a chess piece, right? So, uh, and it happens, it's like uh, the internal representation of these two images that is coming from the same image uh, is like, you know, increased, and other negatives which, which hasn't come from the same image are like put in, into negative mining, but, what happens, again, is it is very difficult to find pairs that are similar, but very difficult to find pairs that are uh, not similar, and we have to do like negative mining, and what happens is these models actually collapse, which basically means that uh, uh, it will give you same result, even if, it, it show, uh, if, even if you show it of a different 
image uh, of a sun image it will it can gladly show you the same similarity so now <laughs> after talking so much about self supervised learning you might be thinking like when metric learning is coming so this is the point this is the point where metric learning shines is to co to prevent this collapse of these uh, energy models there are two ways like contrastive and regularization so uh, yeah the contrastive method is the metric learning uh, so which basically find a similarity between embeddings with respect to distances uh, so you might have seen uh, there are different kind of distances uh, cosine similarities manhattan etc etc so that's where the metric learning shines but again uh, there are different kind of cosine similarity which you can basically use to form these embeddings but what's the problem and why uh, why are we discussing this so we are discussing this because the problem on relying distances is it can show very easily show you it can very easily not capture the semantic of the distances like i love pizza and i do not love pizza can show you as a high score as 80% uh, and and you don't have to be a like linguistic expert to understand that the two, these two uh, sentences are totally different and um, yeah so what is the solution here like we have stored we have created and stored this vector in a vector databases why it's showing this like so so the whole the whole point of the stock is not just rely on the vector database because it's a infrastructure where you are storing the embedding but actually understanding how these embeddings are actually created and choose your model like accordingly even if it is needed so okay so uh, yeah what is contrastive so two images are like augmented uh, and augmentation basically means i'm using images here but it could easily be done with sentences i'm using images here because it's very easy to explain things with the help of image so what is uh, augmentation is you can crop you can you know flip the image and you know uh, uh, and tell that yeah this is how a dog looks like plus uh, this is how like a chair or something looks like and will form a contrastive learning and there's a contrastive loss yeah but then again we run into this negative mining problem and uh, what happens is uh, it is very difficult to mine and it's computationally what happens is we sa you have to sample it right keep sampling 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 but it at one point it becomes very uh, computationally expensive so what people came up with triple loss right uh, so choose your anchor data points choose points that are like positive to the anchor and very smartly devise the negative examples of the data in the triple loss so uh, if i have to take a puppy example the po positive would be a augmented image of that puppy a crop one and then uh, all the other uh, animals could perform as a negative uh, uh, ne negative examples okay so uh, how much time are we left with uh, okay so uh, yeah so how these things ca can we uh, you know expand it to sentences uh, from images because we have seen so many examples of images so something called cmcse was proposed and which is simple contrastive uh, learning of sentence embeddings uh in which what happens like you have got three pairs you have uh, you have uh, entailment neutral and contradiction so entail uh, you are given a premise sentence and you are find like sentences that are similar to that you you will find sentences that do not depend on each other like they are very independent of each other and then you find contradictory sentences which we are talking about uh, so basically is this i love pizza and i do not love pizza will be solved with the inference problem it's a inference problem it's a not a vector database problem that is what i'm trying to say so when we use this from i love pizza and i it do not like i like pizza it shows 94% similarity but when we train it with cmcs and uh, we understand i love pizza and i do not like pizza have come down to 66% so so at the end i just uh, 
want you to check out uh, like our library because we are doing a lot to uh, increase your speed in the pipeline and then you know uh, give us a star if you can and look just look beyond the distances thank you okay we have just three minutes for any question for Sanam no no question. Yeah, yes. One question. Is there a way to train together in a single patch with uh, triplets and negatives included? Uh, how should we think about the CSE loss? Do you uh, can you give a little bit more detail about how the contra how the CSE loss is designed so that it uh, expands the distance between the anchor and the negative? while at the same time uh, reducing the distance. That is actually done with the human supervision. So we choose example and then, you know, uh, there's a whole for long formula of contrastive loss, which is also basically used in the, the triple star loss as well. The, the only kind of innovation that is happening is we, instead of positive negative, we are also adding an anchor point in the triplet loss, that is the only difference. Uh, yeah, it's a very long formula. I, I, I hope not to include formula uh, this time. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I was just wondering, uh, I was just wondering intuitively, uh, for example, in the, can you train one batch of uh, training samples uh, containing both the positive and the negative samples from the anchor? Okay. Or do you have to no, include no, 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 them in two no, no. different batches? No, 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 you have batches? to totally, totally uh, give your own negatives. You cannot use Anchor itself for the uh, negatives. I'm so okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so you basically have to humanly label these exactly, negative samples? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Uh, that's why I always say a self-supervised and not like, you know, totally unhuman un kind of thing. There is a level of human supervision that is needed. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We can take one more question. Hello. Hello. So now, thank you for your talk. I wanted to ask about future plans of your project, what you would like to include next and so on. Thank you so much for that question. So uh, we created this project just to enhance the speed and like we are trying to include it with different vector databases right now. Uh, the future plan is to include local la large language models as well so that you know, you cannot only do searches, but you can also talk to the uh, models in the uh, in the whole infrastructure. So what we are giving you is the whole infrastructure instead of like little, little parts. So I love uh, that part of this project as well. Yeah, so include graph embeddings and et cetera. And uh, yeah, would love your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.